Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. There's one thing that's missing out of all of this reading this morning from 1 Kings chapter 18 that, that we need to know. Can anybody tell me what was going on at this time in history when Elijah went back to Ahab? Famine, kind of. There was a famine, but the famine was going on because of a drought. Who said that? Was that a guess? Yeah, good guess. That was a really good guess. It's drought. And, and actually at this point in time when Elijah goes back to Ahab, this is the third year of the drought. And the reason this is important is because we have to understand who Ahab and Jezebel and the people are worshiping, right? We have to understand a few things about this God named Baal, right? It's not like Baal like you bounce. It's Baal. And he had how many priests? 450, it says. What happened to all of the priests of God? Does anybody know that? That's an important fact to know, too, before we get really deep into this story. They were killed by Jezebel. They were killed by Jezebel's servants. Actually, one of Ahab's servants was hiding prophets of God in caves so that Jezebel's servants couldn't find them and kill them. But Jezebel's servants went around and killed all of the prophets of God so that only one remained. Elijah was it. He was the only one that escaped being killed. And now he was headed back to talk to Ahab about what he had done to the kingdom. And when Ahab sees him, this is one of the best lines ever, he said, Is it you, you troubler of Israel? Ahab says to Elijah, right? Because Elijah has troubled Israel, but why? Because he's the one that brought on the drought, right? Elijah's the one that said, God's not going to cause it to rain here anymore because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And Ahab sees him and he says, Is it you, you troubler of Israel? And, and Elijah says, I have not troubled Israel. You have troubled Israel. And why has Ahab troubled Israel? Because he married Jezebel. And Jezebel brought in her God and her people. And, and Ahab turned from following God to follow after Baal. And what is Baal the God of? There's one person in here I know because she's smiling. Baal is the God of thunder and rain. And who is Ahab worshipping? Who is Ahab worshipping? Baal. And Baal is the god of thunder and rain. And they are currently in a drought. Seems to me your god isn't working. I mean, doesn't that seem clear? I mean, if your god is the god of thunder and rain and you've been worshipping now for three years and you've been in a drought for at least three years, wouldn't you think that there's something going on with your god? I mean, really? So Elijah comes back and he says to Ahab, you're the one who's actually been troubling Israel because you're not doing what God has called you to do. You're not following God and doing what God has led you and gave you to do. You've gone after your own understanding. You've gone after your own things. You've gone after your own idols. You've gone after what you think is most important and needs to be put up in front of everybody and made it to be your God. And Elijah says, let's put this to a test. Bring your prophets. Bring everybody from Israel to Mount Carmel. And Mount Carmel is where? It's in the northern kingdom. But more specifically, it is a <coughs> altar to Baal. Let's go to your God's worshiping spot. Let's go to your home field. Bring all of your people. And they gather there, and Elijah says, here's a test. Let's have two bulls brought, and all of your prophets, the 450 of you, can take care of cutting up some wood and cutting up the bull and making together a, a, an offering to Baal. And I'll do the same thing. Me alone. I'll take the, the whatever bull you don't decide on, right? So they had two bulls brought, and the prophets of Baal chose the bull they wanted. They took the wood that they wanted, and they set up their altar, and they set everything up. And Elijah told them, now call upon your God. 
right? Call upon Baal to have him come and to bring fire down upon this, right? And then he said about noon, right? He gave them the he gave them some time. They did it in the morning. He told them at noon. Then Elijah came and mocked them, saying, "Cry aloud, surely he's God, right? Either he's meditating, right? What kind of God goes away to meditate?" It's actually an interesting um, translation on that word there. If you want to know what that actually means, come to see me after worship. It's not meditate. We'll talk about it after worship. Or he wandered away. He's meditating. Or he wandered away. Or maybe he went someplace on a journey. Or perhaps he's sleeping. Right? Baal actually, according to, to the understanding of the God of Baal, he actually would rest. Because he brought rain during a season and then he would rest and go to sleep. Maybe he was actually sleeping. Right? He was not awake and he needed to be woken up. Maybe you just need to cry louder. So they raved on some more until the offering of the oblation. And the oblation there is actually another mistranslation. It should be minha, which is the loyalty offering. Meaning, you've got to give offering now to who you're going to be loyal to. Who are you going to follow? So Baal's prophets had all of this time, they had all day to set up their altar, to cut up their wood, to cut up their bull, to call upon their God who had not been answering them now for at least three years, right? Because the God of rain had allowed a drought to happen. But yet they still followed after it because they knew that Jezebel killed all of the prophets of, of God. Except for Elijah. Because it was not in their best interest to be politically against Ahab. It was not in their best interest to go against what was set up as the, as the means to help them or to be politically correct in that day. But Elijah stood firm in what God has called him to do. And he came back and he let them have their altar set up. And then finally he said, okay, fine, come over here and we're going to do this. I'm going to set up this altar that's been knocked down that Jezebel has destroyed. And I'm going to put it back together. And he brought how many stones? Twelve. For the twelve tribes of Israel. And he set them up, and then he cut up the wood, and he cut up the bull, and he dug a trench around it. And then he had four jugs filled with water, dumped it on the bull and the wood, right? This is a drought. How big are these jugs? You're thinking like maybe this big, right? They're probably that tall. Clyde said 12 quarts each. They're probably really big. They're, the, they're probably the jugs that were used when Jesus made wine at the wedding in Cana. They're not little jugs. They're big. And all of these people are thinking, you're wasting all this water. Pouring it on that bowl and that wood. And how in the world is your God going to be able to set that wet wood on fire? And not just four jugs, right? Because they filled up the four jugs and they dumped it once. And he said, do it again. And they did it again. And he said, do it again. So how many jugs of water were dumped on this bowl and wood? Twelve. Hmm. Twelve stones, twelve jugs. It filled up the trench around that he had dug, right? It was full of water. And at the time of the minha, the loyalty sacrifice, the loyalty offering, God shows up. And Elijah says, Show these people who is actually God. And at that moment, fire rains down from heaven. And the stones and the wood and the bull and all of the water that was there is now gone. And all of the people said, surely your God is God and not Baal. See, the story is really all about who we are loyal to. Who we follow and why we follow them. The story is all about how we can give our lives over to God and to understand that we are His, that He chose us, not us choosing Him, and we need to follow Him everywhere that He leads us, even if that's someplace we don't want to go. So my question for you this morning, you all should have gotten two cards as you walked in the room, did you? Who didn't get a card? Who needs a card? Can, I, can you guys help a little bit? Pass something. We need a few up here in the front. 
So as we're getting these, let me talk a little bit about this. These should have come to you last week, right? I, I mentioned this cart last week, and there was still a huge stack of them here this week. So I said, okay, fine, we're going to do it this week. Um, this card is one that you're going to fill out here in a few minutes. We're going to take about five minutes after I get done, and you're going to fill out this card. And this card is for you, for you alone, not for you. If you want to share it with your family members, if you want to share it with someone around you, that's fine. But this is for you. I want you to fill this out, and I want you to put it someplace where you're going to find it next year, right? Because it says it's for 2020, my personal plans. I rededicate, consecrate myself in God's service with this personal action plan for 2020. In prayer and worship, I will. In service, I will. In my financial giving, I will. I'm challenging myself to do more in each of these areas this coming year. You need to fill this out and put it someplace where you can see it and keep it. And remind yourself of the challenges that you are setting between you and God. It's for no one else than you. God knows what you write on it. And then you should have received one of these, right? It's a rededication card. This is a card that you can write your name on this if you want. You can leave it the way that it is if you want. But when we come forward for communion, I want you to bring this card with you and lay it in this basket as a sign that you're going to do what you said you're going to do on here. And it's a sign that you're going to do these things that it says here on this card. Gracious and giving God, I rededicate myself into your service. Help me to live generously, to love boldly, to pray and worship frequently, to serve faithfully. We've all been called by God, named and claimed in these waters, and given a life that only he can give to us. So I ask you this morning, are you going to follow after the idols that you've set up for yourself? Or are you going to follow after God and do what God has called you to do? And I'll leave you with this verse and then we're going to take about five minutes for you to fill out this card. Joshua twenty four fifteen. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your father served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord.